Bombings remain a primary method of attack for terrorists due to the availability and scalability of explosive devices. EMS providers, police officers, and firefighters must understand the unique injury patterns caused by blast events to effectively manage casualties. A study by the Israeli Trauma Group compared victims of terrorist bombings to patients with non-terror trauma. The study showed that bomb blast victims had higher injury severity scores, lower initial Glasgow coma scale scores, lower systolic blood pressure at admission, greater surface area of injury, higher need for intensive care. The combination of trauma mechanisms, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary blast injuries leads to these more severe outcomes. EMS providers must understand the four categories of blast injuries, which have distinct mechanisms and effects. Primary blast injury, caused by the blast wave from high-order explosives, which results from the detonation of a solid or liquid into gas. Primary blast injury can lead to pulmonary barotrauma, ruptured eardrums, internal damage, such as to the intestines, ocular rupture, and concussions, even without external injuries. Secondary blast injury, caused by debris, fragments, or projectiles from the explosion. Secondary blast injury results in blunt or penetrating trauma. The correct term for this type of injury from device fragments is fragmentation, not shrapnel. Tertiary blast injury occurs when the blast wave throws the victim's body, resulting in fractures, traumatic amputations, and brain injuries. Quaternary blast injury includes everything not covered by primary, secondary, or tertiary injuries, such as burns, crush injuries, and exacerbations of conditions like asthma or COPD due to inhalation of dust, smoke, or toxic fumes. The explosives can cause all four types of injuries, with primary blast injury being the most dangerous. Victims near the epicenter of the explosion often do not survive, making triage critical. Surviving victims usually suffer from secondary, tertiary, and quaternary injuries, and may have hidden internal damage requiring urgent trauma center care. During bombings, EMS, fire, and law enforcement must work together, particularly with the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit, or Bomb Squad, to secure the scene and mitigate further threats. Awareness of potential additional explosive devices targeting first responders is essential. All first responders should advocate for joint agency training to prepare for future incidents involving improvised explosive devices.